Jurgen, it's nice to be with you again. You and I have been uh, discussing philosophical matters for, I believe, some 10 years now. And in recent years, I've noticed, you know, that an old theme of yours has resurfaced and you have been focus on, uh, focusing on it in your teachings and writings, and that is uh, personalism. Well, my, my approach is more anthropological. Theirs was originally theological. You see, they yeah. saw God, uh, they were theists. Now, one reason their school of personalism didn't survive is because the existentialists came along and talked about the person from an anthropological point of view. And nobody was any more interested in this theistic idea of the person. You know, that because God is a person, the whole universe is a person, and therefore ultimate reality is a person, mm -hmm. or personal. See, so there was a shift. They were left on an island all alone. And then the existentialists came in. Now, as a young man, I picked up on that a little bit. But my focus was more anthropological philosophy of culture. Okay, we, we can take even their notion of the person and my notion of the person, which yeah. is essentially mythodramatic or theatrical, and we can, we can use it both ways. That the, the person is a rational being. And a rational being is something that does what? In my classes, when I ask my students, what is a rational being? Uh, they say, well, we think. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, oh, give me an example of thinking. And there's a silence. Exactly. They don't give me an example. And then I have to give it to them. I said, well, the fact that you're telling me that you're a rational being. So a rational being is something that can either count or account for. Yes. Now, the word rational originally meant to count. To count. But also to account, account for. for. So when you count, you use numbers. Okay. When you account, you use words. So a rational being can only not only measure things with numbers, but can oh, account for, and out of that we get storytelling. We took the word person for granted. Mm -hmm. We didn't ask, well, what does it mean to be a person? All right. But see, this is part of the function of the philosophical mind, is to ask these questions about things that we take for granted. It is an idea, the source of which is in the theater. I call it a mythodramatic model of the person, meaning that the original person was probably a shaman. I, Later, when the word becomes more common, it's an actor in the ancient dramas, ritual dramas. And what did these actors do? They played parts. They mediated between two worlds. Now, any mediation between two worlds has been very difficult for conventional logic to comprehend. It's like the... the understanding a god and a man, mm -hmm. or a bird and a horse. It's known as a chimera. And even Descartes spoke against that. So the tradition in philosophy is talk about one thing, not a thing that is a combination of two things. Okay. See? And so every time, however, you have the word person in its, in its authentic sense, it's always a combination of two things. There's the actor playing a role. There's Laurence Olivier, one thing, playing Hamlet. And the result is this persona of Olivier Hamlet. It's two things. Well, okay. what, what this would be saying is that as rational beings, we become persons. Yeah. Now, what does it mean to be a rational being? It means to communicate or to be in command of certain symbols. You can't just use, you can't just be rational. You have to be mathematically rational. You have to be religiously rational. You have to be institutionally rational. Hmm. You have yeah. to be artistically rational. See, it has to do with the symbols. And this came later in the early 20th century. 
through some of these these a variety of thinkers, and mainly among them Ernst Cassirer in Germany, uh -huh. who came up with this system, this idea of symbolic forms. So every symbolic form defines a particular persona. And we have the ability to become, that's what we're called persons, to become a persona of this, that, or whatever variety. Now, what about uh, your uh, manifesto? How did it come about? Uh, what made you, what prompted you to actually choose that particular term and do it now? The term like manifesto? Like the manifesto of the new personalism. Well, because I, I really share Marx and Engels' view. <laughs> if one were to That's read the, the Communist Manifesto, it's fantastic. Uh -huh. The first pages, they're describing the achievements of, of the bourgeoisie. Yeah. But it is now time to become something else, to become socialistic persons, not bourgeois persons. It's now time to, to undergo a metanoia or a trans-personification. So I write a manifesto, mm -hmm. and it's really not completed yet, thinking that I can describe the old personalism and its achievements, uh -huh. but to make it clear that it's time for the new personalism. And the new personalism is far broader than just being a rational animal. Because what we have done of the, the new personalism, we have expanded the word rational, to mean the use, the, the communicative use of any symbolic system, whether it's scientific, wow. theological, poetic, musical. Yeah, you know, I, all yeah, manifestos are wow. just the tip of the iceberg. That's and one thing I ought to do is what Marx and Engels did, is praise the original personalism <laughs> yes. for what it did achieve. But what it lacked, it lacked the, the breadth of, under, hum, of understanding human activity that we have discovered since we began doing cultural anthropology. We had a very narrow view of the human before cultural anthropology came along. And it's really through cultural anthropology that, that I was turned back to the original Greco-Roman, very primal and primitive idea of what it means to be a persona, as with the shaman. Mm -hmm. I mean, the shaman, in a way, is the original human being. Not the rest of the tribe. The rest of the tribe are there to share in what the, what the shaman experiences. But the, the point is mm -hmm. that in our day, everybody has been granted the political right to be a shaman. That's the whole idea of 1776. American democracy is a leader in this. Hmm. That, in a sense, we educate so that every, every student, every pupil, ought to become a shaman of some sort. To be a person, you have to be in the know, no matter what you do. You've got to be in the know. If you're a bricklayer, yeah, if sure. you're an architect, you've got right. to be in the know. That, but to be in the know means that you have to somehow connect with a world that is neither the hmm. physical world or the psychological world. There's another world out there. This is essential in thinking this. And there are many major thinkers who have agreed with that, that the world of mathematics is not necessarily the world of, of I mean, there's arguments about this, uh, world of the, of the material sort. Mm -hmm. the, the, the big difficulty is this, that in ancient times we thought of people who were in the know as gaining the know from elsewhere. You got the knowledge from God. You got the knowledge from the gods. In Plato you got the knowledge because you worked for it and you, you gained the ideal realm of being and therefore you had the knowledge. The source of the knowledge this shamanistic knowledge slash person knowledge came from elsewhere. Today we don't believe that. Today we believe it's in the human potential itself. 
that our genius lies within us. It's not some genie that comes from the outside. Right. It's inspiration, not sp spiration that comes from there. It's inspire it comes from inside and out. And that's what education ought to be, is the leading out of this potential. But see, that's still another world. It's, it is a world that is yet to come into being. I mean, I don't think Mozart went around praying to God for inspiration. Mozart brought his music out of himself. Great mathematicians bring it out of themselves. Now, we have naturally, in our, in our way of, you know, kind of objectifying things, seen this, this as, an, as a third world all by itself. The problem has always been, well, what's the source of this world? Is it, from, is it divine or it is human? And we have had difficulty in admitting that the source of all this is us. Not the divine. If anywhere, God is within us. <laughs> I think that eventually I can prove that we have persons because there is a system of personhood that presupposes persons. There is a, a system of personhood yes. in which human beings interact as persons. Yes. Okay. And that presupposes being a person. You have to have the stage and the drama and the theater. Mm -hmm. Nice. Before a person even enters, but when the, when the person and, and the actor enters the stage, this system of interaction is presupposed. Yes. And I think this oh. is genetic. Oh. And that we are a very peculiar animal in this respect, that we, we, re we recognize that. But still there are factors in us that always want to single out and claim this is the way to go, not that way. That we forget that, that all human progress results from dialogue. This, this ancient and, and this most ancient and, and primal theatrical model yes. where you have persons in dialogical polemos, really, it's a polemos that we have to turn to, not, not to the interactional theories of economics or political science, because they are basically inhumane. There is no political scientist that, that I know of who in his inter or her interactional model includes the most basic of all human values, which is not justice. But love. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. They have not been able to deal with that. Okay. And we can, we can, because we're a very creative species. Remember now, in the manifesto, I, I define ours as the cinematic era. Yes, I remember that. I uh, that is the very first time uh, that uh, if it probably is the very first time that I actually saw okay. the cinematic being entered into a text as an era. Yeah, this is, this is I mean, key. Uh, the cinema is the Gesamtkunstwerk, the huh. total work of art that Wagner was striving huh. for. I mean, just by, it really is always a, it's it's always always a pleasure, uh, you know, to uh, yeah. converse with you and uh, sometimes uh, uh, where all of, where these conversations take us, it's just exalting, really. Thank you. Yeah, thank you <laughs> for the opportunity.